Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another fork seal video. Today we are doing fork seals on a KLX 300. It's actually on my kid's KDX 200, but we've got the KLX 300 uh, conversion on it. So we are going to do a fork seals on KLX 300s today. It's a pretty simple fork, open chamber, kind of old school setup, but they work really good. So join me as we take this apart. First things first, Gonna take this over the parts washer and clean it up really, really good. Yeah! All right, got the fork all cleaned up in the parts washer. It's still obviously a little dirty, but that's okay because we're taking all that stuff apart. If you guys didn't know, one of the hot setups on the KDX 200 is to put KLX uh, 300 forks on because they're uh, right side up or inverted, I guess, whatever, I don't know. They're this style instead of the other old style. And they're a little bit better and it's also not terribly expensive. I think you have to swap the triple clamps and everything else just bolts right up. Now, I didn't actually do this. It was done to the bike before. Um, it was given to us. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing apart. First things first. Chalk it up in our soft jaws. 30 millimeter. All right, you can see it's got this style uh, damper rod holder. So what we're gonna have to do is pull this spring down, put a wrench on here and then pop that loose to get the spring off. That nut, just so you guys know, is 17. Or 30 again. Now we're gonna take this. I'm gonna dump the oil out. I got a Hand right here. Let that drain and then I'm gonna grab an Allen. I believe it's 14. Yep. 14 millimeter Allen. So there you go. You can see the end. What we're gonna do is before I break this loose, I'm gonna count the number of clicks because I want to set this back to the way the kid has it set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count it in how many clicks in. I'm going to write that down. I got a whiteboard. Write that down, save it, and then uh, we'll set that back when we come back when we go back together. So 13. And so now we're going to back it all the way out so it's not putting any pressure or anything. Got our impact to, for loosening. On these style forks, a lot of times it it you're loose. You initially loosen it from the bottom here, but it's still hooked to the actual damper rod. So there are holders and all that kind of stuff. But one of my goals for this channel, guys, is to teach you guys how to do these things without all the fancy tools. So a lot of times, what you can do is grab this and you just squeeze it over to the side. Use your impact. That's doing is just putting a little bit of pressure on the cartridge to kind of hold it while that impact breaks it loose. There we go, there's our base valve and a whole bunch of gnarly oil. Let that drain. Put the cartridge out. Set that in our sink. Someone's gonna yell at me for not wearing gloves. I'm gonna go put gloves on. Put 
thing is, when you're as screwed up as I am, a little bit of chemicals in the system doesn't really seem to make any difference. Now, you gotta separate these two tubes. First part of that, take a flat blade screwdriver, mm -hmm. and you're gonna put it in between the dust seal and the fork tube, and then just twist. That helps pull it up. And you gotta reach down inside here, there's a circlip. Pull that guy out. And then, if everything works the way it should, which we never know, you should be able to kind of slide hammer this apart. Boom! Just like that. Take a good look at our bushings. Look really good. The inside's getting kind of worn. I think we're going to run with it for another, uh, another service interval. This bike's actually not going to get ridden that much because my kid moved on to the YZ-154 that we rebuilt. And uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you look at that playlist. It's a pretty cool uh, project. We've got a, a used, kind of hammered YZ-125 turned it into a really sweet um, off-road YZ-144. Um, anyway, he's riding that. This one might get ridden by my wife some, um, but it'll mainly kind of hang out until my younger boy is ready to move up to a big bike. So I'm going to run those again. And again, this is what I, I like to put these in line as they come off so that my brain, as tiny as it is, doesn't have to remember which way things go together. So just like that. Now I'm going to take these over to the parts washer, super duper clean them out, and come back. All right. Got the tubes all super nice and shiny clean. One of the biggest things, guys, that you gotta do when you're doing fork seals is, it's kind of like detective work, is to look really closely at the chrome uh, tube. Partially because uh, you wanna make sure, you know, that you didn't ding it or whatever, but then also you wanna find out why it leaked. Now, in this case, this thing, this was the leaky side, the brake side, um, but it turns out it was just dirt. We had ridden some really gnarly mud and stuff like that, so I kind of figured it was gonna leak. Uh, but you wanna inspect it, make sure there's no dings in the tube. There aren't in this one, so we're good. And then the next thing I always do, take some red scotch bright, wrap it around here, and we're gonna just twist it and kind of come up like that on the tube. And what that does is it puts a cross hatch real fine micro cross hatch on this tube that then holds oil a very thin film of oil on the tube as the seals slide up and down which makes the seals slide up and down better and uh, keeps you from tearing seals so some uh, suspension guys call that a micro polish I call it part of the job so um, yeah do that on all of them there we go now I'm gonna grab our seals on this bike, I'm using all balls uh, seals, and I really don't actually like all ball seals that much. I've had a lot of problems with them in the past, but because this bike isn't going to be getting ridden a ton, and they were super cheap, uh, I went ahead and got the all balls kit. Like I said, I like SKF or OEM, but those on, in this situation, those were quite a bit more expensive. Um, and like I said, the bike's going to sit, and then my wife's going to learn how to ride on this thing. So it's okay. If it leaks again, whatever, I'll do it again. But uh, so anyway, that's why. All right. These things, um, it's a Motion Pro product. It's, I call them seal bullets. They're really handy. Um, you don't have to use them. Uh, that one's going to be really hard to get off, but that's okay. So I'll start with dust seal, then circlip. Then oil seal. Now I gotta get the dumb thing off. Gotta be careful though. There we go. Now the washer. Outer bushing. Inner bushing. Now we're going to put them together. Now, 
Gonna take our fork seal driver, which by the way is like the only special tool you really need for this kind of job. Um, but you really should get them because without them you can foul up the tubes and it's just a pain. But first things first is see how you've got this outer bushing. You slide that in and you slide the washer in. Then you're gonna knock that down into place before you go hammering on the oil seal. Here I changed that sound. That's the sound of it going home. Then take our oil seal, come down. I always push it in by hand at first, just to make sure it doesn't get cocked and do something weird. That changes the sound too when it gets home. Circle clip. screwdriver and push it in there but you got to be careful because if you're a gorilla you can take this and jam it and mess up the fork seal so just go easy put it down into place and then for this seal I like to just like that boom all good to go now we're gonna take our cartridge and we're gonna pump it out Make sure it's all empty. Got some brake cleaner here. These things are awesome. You can buy them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, these things are sweet because you can fill them with brake cleaner or whatever, I guess. Uh, and then you just hit it with uh, line pressure from your compressor and you got aerosol spray without having to have all the fluorocarbons in the air or whatever. Uh, and um, it's way less expensive. So big fan of these. Now I'm going to take this, slide it in here, and when it gets down the end you're going to reach up in here and you can feel it. You're just going to guide it to its home. There we go. Got to clean our base valve out really good. There we go. Now, we're going to take this, we're going to slide it into the end, nice and easy, because there's an O-ring on it, that you don't want to tear up on the threads, pass those, we're going to start it by hand, and you should feel it kind of engaged, I mean, if you've done enough mechanic, if you're, if you're going to do fork seals, you probably have done enough mechanic work, you kind of feel when threads are actually starting, there we go. Now, I'm going to tighten it down the same way I loosen it up. Pull this all the way out, cock it over to the side, and use the impact to run it in. There we go. All good. Alright, so now I'm looking up the fork oil spec on this. and. Because there's no way I can possibly remember. I don't even write them all down because we have these funny things called smartphones and computers. So I use the Bell Ray Lubricant Advisor a lot. Um, if there's something that's like I don't totally trust, I call my buddy Brady at TBT because he has specs on everything since they're a suspension specific company. And um, it helps out a lot. But with normal stuff like this, I go to the Bell Ray Lubricant Advisor. You guys can figure that out. I'm not going to tell you how to get to it. Anyway, Put in the machine you're looking for and you get to the front fork. Capacity, there we go. And it is 32.3 to 33 cubic inches per side. I'm gonna go ahead and put 32 and a half. That'll be good enough. All right, so the other thing I'm using my smartphone for here is figuring out what 32.5 cubic inches is in uh, uh, cc's or cubic centimeters because I don't have a cubic inch ratio right <laughs> um, but turns out it's 532.5 cubic centimeters so we're just going to go with 530 we're take a rod bleed that down 
so we don't feel any air bubbles. So that's working really good right now. We're gonna reassemble, take our spring. Now here's the thing, like when you're putting the spring in, it wants to kind of, it's gonna want to kind of drop. So you kind of want to go fast, and you can cock that spring. And here's a little trick: you can take a wrench, you can put it in the coils of the spring like that. And then, if you just turn the spring, it raises that up, and that'll get you enough up so you get this started. And actually, let me back up. I just want to say something. So this nut in here, you want to make sure that is all the way down before you install this cap. Um, it was already. I sorry I didn't show that, but this nut, you want to make sure it's all the way screwed down tight. So then this will get us started. There we go. Pull the spring down, put the wrench on the actual nut. And down. Chuck back up in our soft jaws. Just gonna put a little eep. so it doesn't come loose, and we're good to go. Um, one thing: after every fork seal job, you want to put the fork on the ground and push on it. Make sure everything moves like it's supposed to move. Feels great. Now we're gonna set our clickers back. Get a rag, clean them up really good so that our customer, aka my wife, doesn't yell at us for having 30 forks. There we go. Calyx 300 forks, guys. Super simple, super easy. I highly recommend you do these at home if you uh, can. Uh, I mean, trust me, if you want to bring them to me, I'd love to do them for you. Uh, we definitely make good money on doing fork seals. Um, but the goal of this channel is to get you guys empowered to get your bikes running by yourselves because sometimes it gets really expensive paying people like me and I don't want money to be a barrier for dirt bikes. Um, it already is at some point no matter what, but I want more people riding dirt bikes. Hope you guys like that video. I hope you get out and spread the gospel two wheels and I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on and get out and ride your dirt bikes!